Hi there and as always thank you for joining me. Now this video is a little bit different because it's almost come in the form of a request. I have had people both in my own classes and also here in the channel telling me that although they feel they understand what they consider to be more complicated forms of mathematics, they still struggle when it comes to good old long division. I've mentioned this before in one of my other videos, but this time we're going to dedicate the whole thing just to the one topic. So let's see if we can take away some of the mystery. And we're going to dive straight in and carry out a division sum. Let's do this one. It's 462 divided by 3. We're going to look at the method and just try to gain some understanding of what it is we're doing. So the first thing that we do is we look at the 400s. We are going to divide the 4 by 3. So what we're actually asking is how many times can we get 3 out of 4? How many times can we take it away? Well, the answer, of course, is once. You can only take 3 once away from 4. Now, that means we haven't taken the whole 4. We have only taken one lot of 3, which is 3. We put that on the bottom and we literally take it away. That gives us 1. We've used up 300. We've got 100 left. What we need to do is divide that 100 up by adding it onto the 10s. Now, in this question, the 10s are worth 6. We bring the 6 down the page and put it at the side of the 10. That gives us a 16 because the next thing we're going to do is ask ourselves how many times can we get 3 out of 16? How many 3's in 16? And of course the answer is we can take 3 from 16 5 times. There are 5 3's in 16. But again, 5 3's are not 16. 5 3's are 15. So we put it on the bottom and we take it away. And again, it leaves us with a remainder. And in fact, it's a remainder one. Let's look at what we did. We took 16, we divided it by three. That allowed us to take five threes away from 16. But five threes are only 15. So if we take that away, we have one remaining. That is a remaining 10. We need to share that out by adding it onto the units. So now we bring the two down the page. That becomes 12. Our next question is how many threes are there in 12? And the answer is, of course, four. Now, three fours, we've taken three fours away. Three fours are equal to 12. So if we put that on the bottom and take it away, we get zero. If there is nothing remaining, then we are at the end of our sum. There are no more numbers to bring down. Therefore, 154 is our answer. Now, I know full well how confusing people can find that. So let's do another one and see if we can clarify the process and get used to doing it automatically. So for our second example, we have the number 858 and we are dividing it by six. We do nothing different. We start with the hundreds and we say, how many sixes are there in eight? How many times can we take six away from eight? And of course, again, the answer is one. There is only one six in eight. So we do exactly that. We take it away. And that means there are two remaining. The five comes down the page and gets put next to the two. So our next question is how many sixes are there in 25? The answer is there are four sixes in 25. Now four sixes is only equal to 24, not 25. So again, we need to put the 24 that we have used up, take it away, and we are left with one remaining. The next number we are dealing with is the eight. That comes down the page. And our next question is how many sixes are there in 18? The answer is three and six threes are exactly 18. So once again, we take it away and we get zero. There are no other numbers to bring down. 
we've reached the end of our sum. A third example, and I'm going through this one simply because it's a little bit different. We are dividing 525 by 5. So the first thing we do, let's go to the hundreds. How many fives in 5? Five? 1. And in fact, 1 5 is exactly 5. So when we take that away, we end up with 0. That doesn't change anything that we do. We simply bring the 2 down as we did before. So we're now saying how many 5s are there in 2? 0 doesn't count, of course. It's just the number 2. How many 5s are there in 2? Well, there aren't. You can't take 5 away from 2. So the answer in this case is 0. You could, I guess, put 0 down here and take it away, but you'd still end up with 2. The point is we now bring the 5 down as we have in past examples. So we now have 25 divided by 5, which is 5 exactly because 5 fives are 25 and that gives us 0. There are no more numbers to bring down, therefore 105 is our answer. OK, let's move on to the next stage and we're going to look at what happens if we have a decimal number in our question. In fact, you're going to find out that nothing much changes at all. Let's take a look at this example. 767.7 divided by 3. Start with the hundreds. 7 divided by 3. How many 3s are there in 7? There are 2 3s in 7. But in fact, 2 3s are only 6. We've only taken 6 away. So take that 6 away. We still have 1 to share around. That's going to go on to the next column by bringing the middle 6 down here. And we're going to ask ourselves, how many 3s are there in 16? How many times can you take 3 away from 16? Well, the answer is 5. 5 times 3, however, is only 15. We've only taken 15 away. So we're going to take that 15 away and end up with a 1. Keep going. The 7 is now available to come down. So our next question is how many 3s in 17? Well, it's 5 again. And again, we've taken 3 5s away, so we've taken 15 away. We still have 2 to continue with. The 7 is the last number to come down. We are asked how many 3s in 27? The answer is 9. And of course, 9 3s are exactly 27. So when we take it away, we are left with zero at the bottom, nothing else to come down. Let's go back up to our question because, of course, this number had a decimal point. All we need to do in the answer is put the decimal point immediately above the one in the question. So our answer is 255.9. And this is going to be our last example. This one behaves a little bit differently and takes us into a situation where we need to create our own decimals. Let's have a look and see what I mean here. Again, starting with the hundreds, how many fours can we get out of five? How many fours in five? Just the one. And of course, one four is just four. So we're going to take the four away, which leaves us with a hundred. We've not used all the five, we have one left. Bring the nine down next to it. And we're going to say, how many 4s are there in 19? Well, the answer is 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. If we take that away, however, we have 3 remaining. Carry on with our method. The 5 is the next number to come down here. So we're now asking, how many 4s in 35? Well, the answer is 8. Now, 4 times 8 is 32. If we take that away, we are left with 3. We've reached the end of our numbers here, and we have 3 remaining. You will sometimes see the answer written simply with an R and a 3. Remained a 3. But I want to be a little bit more accurate than that, because in fact, we are able to continue. There are no more numbers here. In fact, we've reached the decimal point, the end of the number. So there's going to be a decimal point in the question and also one in the answer. 
Now, how do we continue when there are no numbers on the end? The answer is we create zeros. By putting a zero after a decimal point, you're not in fact changing the number at all. But what it means is we can now bring that zero down and continue our sum by asking how many fours are there in 30? Well, the answer is seven. Seven times four, however, is 28. So we continue with our method, we take it away and we're left with two. So the same situation arises here. We have a two at the end. Let's create another zero. And you can create as many as you need for this. If we bring that zero down the page and put it here, we are now left with how many fours in 20? The answer is five. And five fours are exactly 20. When we take it away, we get zero. So our answer is 148.75. Now, it is worth mentioning that there are situations where it doesn't matter how many zeros you keep bringing down, you never seem to get to the end of the sum. Obviously, you can't continue forever. And if you believe this is going to be the case, then you would end your answer and maybe round it to two, maybe three decimal places. Now, let's just cover something off here, because I am fully aware that many people, particularly in the UK, were taught how to do this using short division. Let's just have a look at short division. There is nothing wrong with it. And in fact, it is more similar to long division than possibly you might think. I've gone back to the very first question that we did here, 462 divided by three. Now, if you were going to do this using short division, you are simply keeping more information in your head. That is okay if the numbers are relatively easy and you're able to do that. So looking at this example, we say how many threes are there in four? Well, that's one three in four, but that's only three. So we have one left over and we put the one there. We then have how many threes in 16? Well, three fives are 15. So the answer is five. Three fives are 15. Therefore, we have one left over. How many threes in 12? Four. Now that, to be fair, is a simpler process. And as I said, it's more similar than you would think. This 16 here is this 16 here. And the 12 here is the 12 here. The main difference is you are working out the remainders in your head when you are doing short division. You are actually manually doing a subtraction on the paper to work them out when you are doing long division. The end result, of course, is the same. I actually think you can choose if you can do this in your head. That is great. What I might suggest, if you have a sum which maybe is something like seven, five, six, four, I have no idea the answer to this, but let's say you are dividing that by 17. Now, the problem you've got here, first of all, you need to work out how many 17s in 75 and then mentally work out what the remainder is. By using long division, you would work out how many 17s in 75 and work the remainder out manually. And for a more complex sum, I suspect that long division, which gives you a chance to check your work, is possibly the safer option but they are both totally valid methods and you can completely choose the one that you wish to use. Well, I hope you found that useful. I can guess that long division is going to remain a stumbling block for a lot of people, but maybe we've just clarified it for one or two of you. And if we have, that would be fantastic. Hopefully I'll see you again in some of my other videos. My subscription button is right below me here. And at the side, there's another video that you might find useful. See you again. Thank you.